In this lecture, I will be doing a discussion on the step-by-step -step design of a digital FIR filter. First of all, we will be starting with an introduction. But before that, I am able to tell you that this is FIR filter which is available only in the digital regime and it is not following analog filter design methods to design that kind of filter while the IIR filter is following the analog filter design for its transfer function uh, calculations but this FIR filter is following its own methods and is only available in the digital regime. This is a kind of uh, non-recursive filter which is having this kind of equation which is expressing that FIR filter which is having only the inputs and its delay terms and there is no feedback kind of uh, term like uh, the delay output and it is only using the input and its delay values and no feedback from the output or its delay values. So this is the equation of an FIR filter and normally these are A0, A1 and these till M are the constants which are telling that either that is a low pass filter, a high pass, a band pass or band reject filter. The equation is the same for all those filters but with differentiation in these values the filter becomes low pass to high pass to band pass to band reject kind of filter. So if we draw this equation and do its realization then we get this kind of equation in which with the help of the delay elements and with the help of summers and which with the help of multipliers we can logically draw that kind of equation and we can implement it in the form of a logical diagram and uh, in this we already know that we have xn which is multiplied with a naught which is a multiplier and do its summation and then the second term which is the xn minus 1 so we use using the delay element over here we have xn minus 1 multiplying it with a1 and we are summating it and similarly the remaining of the terms in the equation and we are logically implementing that equation and into a FIR filter design. So uh, this filter is using the present and the past values of the input as demonstrated by the equation of the FIR filter and it is only available in the digital regime and its own design methods. Why this is being said as a FIR filter? Let's have this derivation. We can start from that equation, this equation, and we can do its Z transformation into this form. And then we are uh, rearranging this X at value on the other side and we are left on the right hand side these at uh, these terms and uh, we uh, put that assumption over here equal to 1 then we got this kind of equation and then we once to the inverse transformation we get this kind of terms and we, which are finite terms from 0 to m so it is a kind of derivation which is expressing why it's it is a finite duration impulse response because it is having some finite values so it is a finite impulse response filter so what is the basic principle of uh, FIR filter is that it is uh, a kind of filter which is having an impulse response equal to unity normally the input appears on the output with no loss it is for for a limited duration this is what this it is telling us but for the IIR filter it is not, not normally 1 it is near to 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 kind of thing so when the input is coming on the output there are some losses in the output but in a finite duration uh, uh, FIR filter there are no losses uh, and that is elaborated by this equation so HY is equal to YW over XW by definition so we can if put this value of 1 then yw is equal to xw so output in frequency domain is equal to input in frequency domain and it says that fir filter introduces no losses and h is equal to 1 while in the case of iir filter we have some losses that's why h is smaller than 1 and uh, there is another thing that uh, frequency transformation method is not valid for fir filter we 
cannot calculate any unknown transfer function of higher uh, high pass filter from a known low pass filter transfer function but it is frequency transformation is only valid for the infinite impulse response filter normally when we calculate the uh, transfer function of the filter we have this kind of generic equation which is involving m which is the magnitude of the transfer function and this is the phase of the transfer function normally in the calculations of the iir filter we have involved only the magnitude of the transfer function but we can see over here in case of fir filter that we involve both the magnitude and the phase and by this equation we can see that fir are the constant phase filter because the because the magnitude is equal to 1 and theta is equal to wn which is representing a phase angle which is wn is equal to theta so these are the constant phase filter because we have uh, w is constant over here as w is constant over here so uh, with the increase of n which is theta is equal to wn either the theta is increasing or decreasing at a constant rate for an fir filter because it is not the case in an iir filter uh, uh, because over there W is also varying and N is also varying but in case of FIR filter the W is constant but N is varying so it is increasing or decreasing at a constant rate so we can say that FIR filter are the constant phase filter while in case of IIR filter the, they are not constant phase filters because the variation of W and N in sideways will be introducing some uh, changes in the frequencies uh, as well so uh, we have uh, how we can calculate the fir filter transfer function we have two methods one is the trial and error method and which is having the fourier series method and the fourier transformation method and other is the empirical formula method empirical formula method uh, is a kind of more accurate method but it involves some complex operations and it is a kind of cassers Kasser's empirical formulas are used for the design calculation for the transfer function calculation of the FIR filter but we will be uh, using uh, the trial and error method for, uh, in which we will be listening to the Fourier series methods and we will be using that method and we will be doing the uh, calculation of the transfer function of the FIR filter so in FIR filter there is no mathematical model like the Butterworth and Chebyshev model and, but it is only a kind of trial and error method and we will be following this Fourier series method out of the two and let's uh, see over here uh, if we want to design an FIR filter transfer function by using the Fourier series method firstly we have to get the impulse response equation so the impulse response equation is this one we already know that HW is equal to 1 for an FIR filter and when we do the inverse discrete time Fourier transformation equation then we can calculate from that HW the HN and uh, this equation uh, we put H1 and we use that equation to calculate HN and by putting that as assumption is equal to HW is equal to 1 and compute the HN and once we compute the HN we put uh, n different values we put n0 n1 till n n divided by 2 which is capital n is the order of the filter which is all which will all be always be given in the specifications of the filter and you can put that value over here so you use this equation and with the help of this equation putting hw equal to 1 you calculate the hn and put different values of n from 0 to n divided by 2 to calculate different terms of the Fourier series which are used to calculate the transfer function of the FIR filter so put those values of H0, H1 in this way, H2 in this way and other values in this way and you can determine the transfer function of the FIR filter you know that transfer function of FIR filter is equal to output over input to the cross multiplication x on the other side and you are using doing the inverse Z transformation and this is the step which is involved uh, to do the realization of the filter so this is a pre-procedure of the filter realization that you are uh, doing the cross multiplication you are using the inverse Z transformation and then you are converting that from Z form into the uh, 
discrete time form in order to use that equation to do the realization of the filter so why we are using uh, till n divided by 2 is that if we use infinite number of values then we cannot use those values in for the computers for the computers we have to specify the last value of the Fourier series for the transfer function calculation so that that's why we have used this uh, n divided by 2 over here so we are limitizing the infinite Fourier series coefficients used for the transfer function calculation to finite number for the computer used by this following this equation over here so uh, another uh, thing is that uh, uh, if we have a kind of sharp transfer function like we can see this kind of transfer function for an FIR filter which is very sharp to in order to avoid that sharpness which is a kind of problem for uh, tra sharp transients in the system uh, we use the window functions but we will not use those win window function in our uh, designing of the FIR filter problems it, it is just for the information purposes that uh, it is a kind of uh, uh, in the FIR filter the transfer function is a kind of sharp square and in order to uh, 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 decrease the sharpness of that square we use the window function but these sharp squares introduce some kind of sharp sharp transients which can destroy the filter and it, which are harmful to that and this is our uh, these are being known as Gibbs criterion and we can use the window function to prevent the Gibbs criterion so now we will see how we can design an FIR filter without using these window functions with the help of the Fourier series methods let's let's have a problem over here we can discuss it in this problem we have a low pass FIR filter and with the following specifications we have the cutoff frequency sampling frequency the order of the filter and then we have the filter length required for the Fourier series expressions to calculate the transfer function is 11 over here for the computer use over here so let's follow these methods first of all we will be doing the realizations of the cutoff frequency this is the cutoff frequency we are using this formula and we are using the sampling frequency and we are putting over here we are uh, doing the normalization of the cutoff frequency which is WC we have calculate, calculated over here secondly is the fixing of the transfer function of the filter we already know that transfer function of uh, HW for an FIR filter yeah. is equal to 1 for some finite duration and uh, for all other durations it is 0 this is the magnitude uh, uh, taken into consideration and we skip this phase uh, part of the uh, approximation intentionally and we are not focusing on that just you rely on this and fixing the transfer function of the filter and afterwards we are determining the impulse response of the filter which is HN with the help of HW and we are putting the WC values in the IDFT uh, formula in the IDTFT formula we have put this value of HW the WC values and we have to calculate the hn which is this one and then we have to put the value from 0 to n divided by 2 uh, in this to calculate the terms the Fourier series terms for the transfer function calculation so now the determination of the coefficients of the impulse response is that we have put the value of 0 over here we have put the value of 1 2 3 4 and 5 and this is uh, these are the values we have calculated and we can use this expression we uh, because we have to calculate uh, uh, length of these Fourier series values n plus 1 so th there has to be a transfer function which is HZ and which is needed to be calculated from 11 Fourier series values which are these are six values from 0 to 5 and we can calculate the minus values uh, from this expression over here and we can calculate those values on the other hand side on the right hand side these values are appearing from h1 to h5 0 is the central value and on the negative uh, left hand side we use this expression which is saying that the left hand side values will be the same as on the right hand side values so we can see that h1 is equal to 1 over pi so h minus 1 is equal to h1 is equal to 1 over pi and similarly we can calculate all the values we can put those values and uh, we can uh, after we have to do is that determine 
the transfer function from this impulse response of the discrete form and we are uh, using uh, uh, this expression over here and you can see over here that we can do its Z transformation and after doing its Z transformation we get these kind of equation but this is a kind of uh, there is a problem with this kind of transfer function that this kind of transfer function cannot be realized because it is a kind of non casual and containing some future values so we have to multiply all those values with some kind of Z minus 5 and then we will be getting it in the equation in this form and this equation is a kind of casual equation which can be realized in this form and we can do the we can take this transfer function equation and this is a transfer function equation of the digital FIR filter and we can follow the steps we can uh, 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 put it equal to y z over x z do the cross multiplication and we can do the inverse z transformation the time shifting z transformation property and we can have the value of uh, have the equation of y n and we can use that, that equation and we can do the realization of it by using the delay elements by using the multipliers by using the adders and this is the realization of the filter so if we can uh, uh, see that uh, we can compare the impulse responses of the IAR and FIR filter then this it is a kind of just approximate diagram but we can see that for a finite duration the FIR filter is showing the better results than the IAR filter which is showing it for all the infinite values and there are less losses in the FIR filter but it is just for a finite duration while the IAR filter is showing some losses but it is for infinite duration and we can see that in case of FIR filter if we increase the Fourier series values then the efficiency of and accuracy of the FIR filter increases but it depends on which computer we are uh, analyzing that filter okay thank you very much